Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching. But it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. No, we were going to build a whole set. On a stage. Yeah. Maybe I could have given you guys advice if I existed. Yeah, there that you year. go. There you go. Well, that's very <laughs> bright. That's very bright. Yeah. So, so that that's what made that a pleasure to shoot, as opposed to a lot of different things. <laughs> but just to you know, you're working it out. For for me, it's like you really can't rehearse these scenes until you're going to shoot one piece at a time, and then you're gonna and then you're gonna rehearse it. And, and and figure out, or you should already know where you want your cameras, and, and then put it on its feet, and then see if you can improve it and coordinate all the other elements that need, you know, consideration, whether it be visual effects, special effects, wardrobe, makeup, costume, uh, 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 you know, script supervisor, uh, uh, the, the guy with the light meter in your face. <laughs> you know, pull, pulling there. I, I like the foreshortening. You know, where they come and measure you. You know, with, with a lens to your nose, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's daunting. And I really, at that point in my life, particularly, I was looking for the biggest challenges I could find, and that's why I took this film. Definitely. I'm sure one of the messages behind the movie was don't wait two weeks to buy your son's gift when they're all out of stock. Well, it, it, I think it, <laughs> I think it goes beyond that. I think it's 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 like, the, you know, there's kind of a wake up call <laughs> it, uh, that I think started with, with my generation, you know, the, whose, whose fathers uh, and many mothers uh, came home from World War Two. And, uh, uh, you know, they just, there's a sort of a generation of fathers that didn't get too involved. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not I'm, saying, I'm not saying there's uh, not exceptions, but I think since then on, uh, you know, fatherhood and, 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 and more awakening to really what the job entails other than don't ask your mother. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, so so I, I think that 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 film and, and there's several others, maybe too many that tried to tell the same story, which may may have made Jingle seem a little ordinary at the time. But still, you know, the fact that it was wrapped in the holiday message made it more poignant, I think. Yeah. Another message I interpreted from it was. You know, you don't need a toy to be happy when you have everybody around you as well. Because doesn't he give the Turbo Man to the Dementor guy? Yes, he gives it to Myron. Uh, uh, the the parade used <laughs> to, 
chair that now sits in my office uh, right across from me. Um, yeah, but, but Jamie, don't you want it uh, or something to that effect? What do I need? It? I got the real thing at home. Yeah, and I think. Off. Yep, I think symbolizing the reconciliation with his dad was a lot to do I with it. So. But, you know, look, look, he wasn't a very good father. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, you know, it, and when people would say, well, you know, he's really not. A very, I said, well, how the hell is he going to learn a lesson if there's no problem? You know? Yeah, I remember seeing it in theaters that year. And when when he was going through all that trouble just to get an action figure, there was a part where I was thinking to myself, I'm glad I don't have him as a father. <laughs> you're, you're, well, uh, and uh, I guess some people would say he wasn't a very good husband. Either, so. <laughs> yeah, when you're a workaholic and you prioritize work over your yeah, family, well, that's when things... Well, I, I, I do I do really like the joke uh, uh, at the beginning of the movie where he says to, to Rita Wilson, you're my number one customer. <laughs> well, Liz, Liz, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But the fact that he tried to get the action figure, you know, shows that there was a wake up call in him. <laughs> There was, there was, uh, you know, let's face it. He'll, it, it, he'll be fine until the next spring sale. Uh, you know, I, I never thought there would be a sequel, uh, but, and there is a jingle all the way too, which I, I've never seen, uh, starring Larry, the cable guy. Uh, uh, and I, I hate to admit I, everything I have read about it in terms of the story line, about about uh about a poor divorced father whose ex-wife is married to a rich person and and what will he do to try and show his daughter how, what she means to him to what lengths uh, will, will he go and and uh, i said well that that's you know that's pretty good thinking yeah, <laughs> that is really good is. thinking yeah, no, and, uh, in, in, you know, maybe they had a formula there that they might have hung on to in the way that, you know, Fargo, <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, you know, the Fargo series has nothing to do with the movie, but there's a spirit and a somewhat relationship between all the different elements uh, each season uh, that... Uh, well, who knows? You know, now that now that Disney owns it, I think they're much smarter than Fox was. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I'll have to watch that. That does sound like a role that Larry the Cable Guy would embrace. If, it? You know, if they if they played it straight, I'm sure it would be very nice. And if they play it too broad, which is what I'm afraid of, uh, then I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, like I said, I, I certainly, I certainly not one to judge other people's work as severely as they've judged my work, especially Jingle All the Way. <laughs> yeah, I was going to get to that. What was the reception like when it premiered in theaters? Uh, uh, well, it all depends what theater you were in. Uh, uh, the uh, the audiences were there. There was a tremendous amount of competition. Uh, we were rushed through post production. Uh, this very, very, very compact uh, process, you know, maybe half the time you'd usually be allotted. And we opened up in between the original Space Jam and 101 Dalmatians. And uh, and we got creamed. Uh, 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 however, our second weekend was higher than our first weekend, which is one of those metrics that really didn't exist. Uh, and, and, and so we, and then it didn't continue to grow. We thought, we thought due to that uptick the second week that, that the film was catching on, not by critics who were savage, uh, couldn't wait to jump on 
Arnold is a befuddled American, uh, and, and, you know, and he's mugging and, and, and all this, you know. They, they couldn't resist all that. But we thought that the film was getting traction with audiences. But it, it, it's like once in a while, you know, a boogie board down at Zuma Beach, and once in a while you think a wave's going to be good, and it just kind of peters out. <laughs> Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia, saying so long, and uh, I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.